Hello. Thank you all for being here today. And welcome to the Aspen Challenge presentations. For those of you that don't know, the Aspen Challenge provides a platform for young people to create solutions to some of society's toughest problems that, quite frankly, the rest of us haven't figured out yet. So um, a lot of these young people are going to grace the stage today, and we're going to hear about some of the most creative and remarkable solutions they've come up with. With, 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 with problems they face in their communities every day. The Aspen Challenge believes in elevating youth voice. We believe that young people have a seat, should have a seat at the table when we're discussing issues that they face on a daily basis. So um, thank you all for being here, all of the teams, and um, I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. Uh, the Aspen Challenge is also part of a newly formed division of the Aspen Institute called the Youth and Engagement Programs. And they are led by our fearless leaders, Raj Vinakota and Trey Maxey. Will you guys stand up? Raj, Trey? Where are they? I know they're here somewhere. Hiding somewhere, of course. Um, and none of us would be sitting. There's Trey. <laughs> There's Jackie. And I don't know where Raj is, but he's somewhere. Um, but of course, none of us would be sitting here today if it wasn't for the leadership and the support and the vision of Jackie and Mike Bezos. Sorry, Jackie and Mike. They have tirelessly dedicated themselves to elevating youth voice and serving the youth of this country because above all else, they believe in youth and they believe that youth have what it takes to create change for all of us, not only for themselves, but for society at large. And I feel honored to be a part of their family and a part of the program. So thank you, thank you, Jackie and Mike. So today you're gonna hear from four remarkable teams, two from Philadelphia and one from the city of Chicago. Um, you're going to hear from Northeast High School and Sankofa Freedom Academy High School, who took on the issue of food waste and food access in their community. Uh, you're also going to hear from George Washington High School, who took on Zeke Emanuel's challenge around healthy living and food and nutrition. And hailing from Chicago, we have Wendell Phillips from the south side of Chicago. They took on Robin Robinson's challenge of the Chicago Police Department to bridge a culture, to create a culture of trust between young people of color and law enforcement in the city of Chicago. So you are going to be amazed, you're going to be dazzled, as I am every day because I live this, and I could not be more excited and honored to share it with you. Um, what I'd like to show you first and foremost is a video that recaps the program in Philadelphia so you can get a snapshot of, of how the program works, how it operates, and um, you're going to hear me say this several times today, but these teams of high school students had eight weeks to change the world, so imagine what you could do in eight weeks and, then, and what you can't do in eight weeks, and then you'll hear from them. So cue the video. Are we ready? Probably the most exciting thing about the Aspen Challenge is that you have a group of young people from different high schools here in Philadelphia, from any city, who come in with the ability to do great things. But this actually activates that ability. It catalyzes them because it gives them tools, it gives them the belief, and it gives them the experience to actually try to change their community, to experience that, to fail maybe, but to learn from it. While they have to work hard and come up with solutions, they're so rewarding and they're rewarding because the children discover that they can actually make a difference, they can actually do things that matter for their communities um, and for their generation. The youth here today are capable of, of attacking and, and solving such big problems because they see it. They see it in their everyday reality. It's, it's not something that is far away, it's, it's here, it's in their communities. I challenge you to design your own methods of recovering food in a scalable way to build a more sustainable community and country. I encourage going out of your comfort zone, even if you're on a local level. I say go out of your comfort zone and really get to know people and get to know cultures, something outside of what you know. I feel like that, that helps you more than anything. A lot of people don't realize the power that we have in our young people. And I really believe that they will come up with the kinds of answers, you know, that'll spread across this country. That's my challenge to you today. 
to make the impossible possible, to change the culture of violence by leading a movement to make nonviolence cool. It's a moment in leadership that they take with them for the rest of their lives. So I think this is a starting place for something really special for some amazing young leader. What gets me in my heart, what I'd have to say, is the fact that I can actually start making a change in my city. That's extremely exciting because a lot of Philadelphians are suffering. I think challenges like this actually make us pay attention to things that others don't pay attention to. It takes a blindfold up of our eyes and makes us look at the bigger picture. The fact that you now get to work on something that's not just going to be on a piece of paper, it's something that can be instrumented into real life situations. It just it makes it all the better. This changed all of us, and it gave us a new point of view. This is not something that, oh, your teacher is giving you a grade for. This is something that you represent even when you leave this area. We faced a lot of obstacles. Obstacles came our way every day, but the obstacles then, there are obstacles for a reason so we could get past them and get through them. And so, like we said, we hopped over them obstacles and we made it happen. It's always good to step out of your comfort zone. And like when I push myself to go out of my comfort zone, it just makes everything so much better. It gives me more confidence in myself. I learned that vision is extremely necessary to get anything done. Um, without a vision, like the old edit says, you're lost. I feel like it's going to demonstrate youth engagement and it's going to make students um, not become passive about what's happening, but become active responders. If you can be you, don't copy me, don't copy anybody, don't aspire to be anybody. If you can be exactly who you are, you're incredibly powerful. We all want to hear that. Your, your voice shoots up like a light. We need to be the, the change that we want to see and lead it by example. So it has to go beyond Aspen and it needs to be something that we truly care about to see a difference. If I'm going to work with the next generation, it has to be outside of the walls of the classroom. It has to be outside of facts and dates and you know concepts about history. It has to be about what history are you making. The idea that you could say, no, 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 I really mean young people. Like, let's get our you know brightest and best teenagers to start solving real social problems. I think that's genius. I mean, I know as a psychologist that kids are actually smarter than we are, and they have uh, the experience that we don't have. They always rise to the occasion when given the opportunity and given the assistance to put their thoughts and ideas together, uh, they come up with amazing solutions uh, to their problems. We are Northeast and we're going to Aspen. We're going to So a good friend of mine just recently said to me, you know, I think, I think it's wonderful that you think you can go into these cities and create change and do all of these things. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I don't. I know they can. And that's all we're here to do is elevate youth voice because I don't think I can do it. I know they can. And what you're about to hear, I'm really excited to share once again. So without further ado, Northeast High School, get ready. You're coming up. Northeast High School Team Marikai is about to grace us with their present on the stage, so please give them another very big round of applause. We're excited to see you. My name is Sandra Reggie. My name is Kim Barksdale. My name is Milo Duderville. My name is Atu Adu. Alejandro Geraldo. I'm Edlira Kulsi. Navil Perez. And I'm Desiree De Jesus. And we are from Northeast High School. We chose Como Ahamas Challenge to Reduce Food Waste because the greatest problem of cafeteria was facing was food waste. We have seen a lot of fruits and milks being wasted and being on the floor. We have even seen kids playing basketballs with them. So here's a fact. Worldwide, actually in the US, 40% of the food is being wasted. If you just save 20% of them, you could lavishly feed 20 million people. In a world where one-third of the food being produced is wasted, 
that is 1.3 billion pounds, you could lavishly feed 3 billion people. In a world where 805 million people go hungry every day to bed, food waste doesn't make any sense at all. Therefore, we wanted to create a change and came up with the organization known as Meraki. Meraki is a Greek word, which means doing things with passion, purpose, and love. How do we start? We started by speaking with our food service manager, who taught us about universal feeding, which is a program that states for a student to be eligible for free lunch, they have to pick three of the five food groups, even if they don't want it. You can see where that could lead to a lot of food waste. We then had our fellow uh, members go down our, uh, in the cafeteria on Tuesdays and Thursdays and collect food. We found some days we collected 50 to 60 fruits a day. Now think about this. That's 12 gallons of milk per day times 180 school days, and then by 300 schools within Philadelphia, that's 648,000 gallons of milk per school year and 3,240,000 pieces of fruit. We reached out to our Northeast High School community to find innovative ways to build community and have fun. So we teamed up with Elect, teen moms, and taught them how to make smoothies for their children. At the end, we gave them boxes with ingredients and recipes in them so that they can take it home and try it for themselves. Realizing that the special but, um, needs students did not get that much attention in, in, our, school, in our school community, we use our unwanted milk to make pudding to try and integrate them back into our community. We then work with the Free Library of Philadelphia Get Hype Philly cooking program to make pancakes with our unwanted milk. At the end of the day, it was so fun and we learned how to make breakfast with literacy. We did not stop there. For that reason, we decided to host a chop competition. Yes, our very own chop competition, just like the one on TV. At our chop competition, we took the foods that we collected to create boxes of ingredients for contestants to make any dish of their choice. It was a wonderful experience as well as an innovative way to repurpose unwanted foods. The best chef did not only receive a cash prize, but she was also moved to tears by her success. We started making more of an impact and people started to notice it, so it felt bigger. We contacted the Veterans Multi-Service Center and they told us in a single night an average of 440 veterans are homeless. This means one out of six homeless people in Philadelphia are veterans. <clears throat> At the end of every week, one of the person in charge of the multi-center come to our school and they picked up the over 150 cartons of milk and over 160 pieces of fruit that we collect throughout the week in our cafeteria. In the past four months, <clears throat> we donated uh, over 2,400 pieces of fruit and over 2,500 cartons of milk. Now think about all the veterans, some of them will children, that we have fed. And one of the veterans said, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I feel so much better since I have been helping these vets. And I am indebted to you and this students. On Memorial Day, we wanted our veterans to feel like home again. So we contacted the ShopRite Center and we received over 100 hot dogs, buns, and pastries. Along with ShopRite, we got Dunkin' Donuts to donate pastries with bananas. And with the bananas, we repurposed them. Just for one moment, just for one second, the veterans can feel as though they were home and forget about all the casualties they went through. Suddenly, everyone started to join in and we became invigorated by our possibilities. It became contagious. We created a social media page with facts about food waste and pictures of our events. This helped, adult, helped us a lot to spread the word about the Meraki team, so people started collecting food and dropping it off at our headquarters. We connected with Harvard Law School to talk about food waste initiatives. Their goal is to change food laws in Pennsylvania, so they wanted to work with us and hear about our experience. We presented our ideas to the school board on March 24. We didn't want them only to realize how important reducing food waste was, but also how much money the school district could save. Together with them, we are going to continue the project of reducing food waste in all Philadelphia schools. 
Education is what makes our mission sustainable. To educate people, we gave them facts to make them conscious about food waste. So we surveyed the students and we found that over 90% of the students learn more about food waste from our effort. We also found that 90% of the students are actively work to reduce food waste. But Meraki didn't stop after the competition. We continued to grow and around 50 members joined our team, partnered with some other clubs, which helped us to consistently collect food to continue helping people in need. We also made smoothies with the milk and the fruit that we collected from our cafeteria, and we sold them at our graduation to raise some money for the team. And we also plan to talk to some community schools to collaborate with us to continue spreading our message. We began to receive tons and tons of support from the community. We went from just eight of us collecting food to now dozens of members collecting food during their lunch on a daily, ba on a daily basis. This really made a huge impact in our food collection. And since Meraki is all about building a stronger community, we decided to show our teachers just how, just how much they inspire us, prepare us for the future, and most importantly, educate us. We depend on them. To show our appreciation, we took donuts that would have been wasted along with other donated food supplies and our very own world famous Meraki smoothies to have a wonderful teacher appreciation lunch. We also encourage students to make two cards of appreciation for any two teachers that inspired them. We were very happy to see the smiles on the faces of our teachers. Meraki isn't just an after school program, it's a movement. A movement that will continue to impact our community. A movement that will continue to educate our youth. A movement that will continue to fulfill the needs of our veterans. So, we have decided to join Philly's challenge to become 90% litter and waste-free and waste by 2035. Meraki is now impacting a city, but soon we will be impacting a nation. So we challenge you to use Meraki to build community and to help others. Be passionate, be purposeful, Meraki. Next on deck is George Washington, so come on up, guys. And I'd like to reiterate, eight weeks, eight weeks. That's what these kids have done in eight weeks, these students have done in eight weeks. So without further ado, here is George Washington. Come on up, guys. Good afternoon, my name is Justin. My name is Mark. My name is Sana. My name is Rashida. My name is Gail. My name is Camilla. My name is Lilia. My name is Amaya and we are Fit, Fit Philly. Philly. On behalf of George Washington High School, we present Fit Philly, a nonprofit community outreach program located in Northeast Philadelphia. As Fit Philly, we chose the Ezekiel Emanuel Challenge. We were challenged to improve the health of our community by enabling three healthy habits into the daily lives of everyone. Good nutrition, regular exercise, and balanced emotional health. The Philadelphia you all may be familiar with is seen on postcards. The electrifying skyline, pretty parks, and streets are eye-catching. However, the real Philadelphia has corner stores every block with sugary sodas, floods of unhealthy chips and snacks, and throughout the city, those wrappers lie. This is not okay. Our youth are constantly being fed high doses of sugar and fat because that is all that is available to them. Now think of this. 10 years ago, every school had a gym. However, with the expansion of new schools, many have moved into the center city real estate office type buildings where they lack space for these gyms. This is an, this is an example of one. So why fit Philly? As students in Philadelphia, we find it frustrating that our school's vending machines offers big hot Cheetos as its healthiest option. Due to the inutritious, unappetizing lunch options, most people resort to even unhealthier alternatives like cup noodles or Doritos, and this is seen throughout all Philadelphia high schools. More than 41% of children between the ages of 6 to 17 are obese or overweight. Is this okay? No. 
No, it's not. This is not okay. <laughs> the graph behind me highlights the shockingly high rates of obesity in the United States. The nationwide average is at 29.4%, and the city of Philadelphia is even higher at 29.8%. If we continue at this pace, the projected case of diabetes by the year 2030 will be 1,731,248. This is not okay. As you can see from this map, the northeast region of Philadelphia has some of the lowest obesity rates amongst the whole city. However, our city's lowest is at almost 20%. That's one out of every five. We as Fit Philly have decided to work hand in hand with our community in order to bring those numbers down. So, our proposed solution for this challenge was to ingrain healthy living habits into the community. As it seemed, we accomplished this by collaborating with our local recreation center and library, as well as arranging for a healthy living challenge within our school. Fit Philly encouraged fitness and healthy living habits by creating a safe area where students came together, socialized, and meditated. To engage with students within our school, Fit Philly continues to offer a healthy living challenge where we give the opportunity to students to learn about the importance of nutrition, physical exercise, and stable mental health. Over a period of time, we studied the correlation between, between mental health and um, their importance of, the importance on great improvement and physical exercise. In partnership with the Free Library of Philadelphia, Fit Philly held weekly community outreaches for children along with their parents in order to teach and really communicate the importance of living a healthy lifestyle. We held these outreaches at three different locations across the city, and each week we would prepare lesson plans having to do with proper exercise, nutrition, or good sleeping habits. It was extremely important that we targeted the age group that we did because we know issues like childhood obesity are best prevented when they're targeted at a young age. One issue we encountered though was that most of the communities that we went into didn't have access to fresh produce. So something that we did to sort of combat this issue was to create a community garden, which was really just a small step in trying to tackle a much larger issue. One of the three areas of life that we were challenged to help our community improve was mental health. And so we know meditation and yoga ties into that perfectly. So we introduced that into our school and our classes and the feedback was great. We incorporated three F's and three E's into our program. The three F's were food, fitness, and fun. Food gave us the opportunity to teach the children about nutrition and fitness allowed the children to get moving and exercise. And fun came all throughout. The three S results into the three E's, excitement, eagerness, and enjoyment. Everyone was excited about Fit Philly, and everyone was eager to get involved, and everyone enjoyed what we did. Studies around the world have been conducted, and have proven that people who have switched from an almost no fruit and vegetable diet to at least five portions of fruit and vegetables each day experience a significant increase in life satisfaction, parallel to what an unemployed person feels after finding a job. For our organization, we handed out surveys to our participants, asking various things, ranging from, how happy are you? How depressed are you? How anxious are you? And from these surveys, we found that there was a 20% overall increase in overall happiness and a 20% decrease in anxiety and depression. In addition, we calculated the BMI percentages of our participants within our organization. And we found that within less than a month, the BMI percentages of our participants decreased by almost half a percent. Our goal in our community was to enable people of many ages to good nutrition, regular exercise, and more stable mind mental state. Over the past four months, we've seen a great deal of improvement. We started with eight members, and now we have 18. And now we work through the community to make sure that they benefit the most out of Fit Philly. Although, we believe that the kids benefited the most because they gained the most amount of healthy habits that they can use in the future. Being a part of Fit Philly isn't just about the community, it's also about future. Our goal was never to just target our school community. Our ambition for Fit Philly is to expand throughout the city of Philadelphia in order to help share the idea of good nutrition, regular exercise, and balanced emotional health. We participate in a myriad events, ranging from the biggest 10 mile within our country and working hand in hand and collaborating with the renowned Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in assistance with Brandon Brooks of the Philadelphia Eagles. He shared his touching and moving story, not only to us, but to the children who attended these workshops so that they, they could have motivation to help with the depression and anxiety that they faced. From these events, they expanded our organization. They showed the community what we do, who we are, and what we stand for. 
We also sponsored local athletes and sports teams within our community. It, mean, it may seem like something small, but to them, it was so much more. It showed them that we are there to support them, to motivate them, and that someone is in their corner. Our social media was always accessible and feasible for people to always be able to reach us, whether that means through our website or through our app, and come out and participate in our weekly outreaches, our monthly events such as the one mile walks, the 5K runs, or our healthy living challenges. We are continuously recruiting more members for our Fit Philly team. Our long-term goal is to have a team at every high school in the city. We are also working on increasing our popularity on social media. We know that nowadays everyone sort of lives their lives through their phone, and our best asset in getting our name out there and our message across is social media. We've actually created an interactive app that's available on the Google Play Store and a website. We are also working on becoming a full nonprofit organization, which means all of our donations would be tax deductible. And we are also debuting Urban Fit, which is the interstate parent entity of Fit Philly, where we would just take our same message and our same work and deliver to underserviced communities. We are Fit Philly, and this is what we stand for. <laughs> So I have to share with you um, an Aspen Ideas Festival moment as it relates to Fit Philly. Um, the Aspen Ideas Festival brings a lot of us together and um, just by chance, Zeke Emanuel was on their plane when they landed in Aspen. So I greeted this team and then of course Zeke is standing right there asking me what I'm doing there and just overly impressed by their work. He invited them to dinner at their home and wants to schedule it as soon as possible to help them continue their work throughout the city of Philadelphia. So we're so proud and um, what a remarkable Aspen moment. Um, and now what I'd like to do, yeah. Woo. From Chicago, I'd like to invite Wendell Phillips to the stage. First question, do you trust the police? No. Why not? Because I don't feel that they serve to protect. They take their powers, they take their authority to overboard. First question, do you trust the police? Not really. Why not? Because every time I hear something about the police, it's never positive, it's always something negative. Like Hi, everybody. We're Team Tactics, which stands for Teens and Cops Together in Chicago Successfully. We attend the Wendell Phillips Academy High School and the Bronzeville Committee on the South Side of Chicago. In February, we entered the Aspen Challenge Competition. This program provides resources for young people to design solutions for the community's most critical issues. Robin Robinson, the Director of Community Affairs for the Chicago Police Department, posed this challenge to build authentic relationships between teens of color and law enforcement. We chose to tackle this issue because we could see that it was a large issue in our community and we felt like we could make a change. 37% of the youth population is African American, yet we account for over 80% of juvenile arrests in Chicago alone. This incarceration rate is alarming. As a result, we have seen tension in, uh, on social media, in the news, and just walking out of our front doors when it comes to officers of the law. We want to see teens and cops come together. We want mutual respect to be given and felt on both sides. We believe not only this improve relationships and those specific groups, but rather bring communities together as a whole. And it began to tackle such a large issue. We started to attend beat meetings throughout the CAPS program. CAPS stands for Chicago Alternative Policing Strategy. They were attempting to work with communities to solve problems in a collaborative way. We saw that this was a perfect opportunity to build our own relationship with officers and create an interaction with students at our school. 
We built a versatile curriculum and shared it at the schools so teens and cops to come together. Our work consists of three workshops. The first workshop is focused on team building, such as icebreakers and skits. The second workshop is focused on knowing, do's and, nah, knowing your rights as well as do's and don'ts in certain scenarios between teens and cops. The third workshop is focused on Q&A as well as mentorship development between teens and cops. We also partnered with Brownsville Community Action Council to share our curriculum with other schools in the Brownsville community. We ensured that our solution, uh, we ensured that our solution would be able to function well at any other school. We utilized our budget to thank the police officers and students for participating with refreshments, but the implementation of our solution was not financially taxing. With the support we had built, we developed a system of people who want to see a change in our community. We even got Robin Robinson to attend one of our meetings hosted at our school. We also teamed up with the Illinois Leaders for Equity and Education who focus on the school to prison pipeline. We realized that this issue extends further than one-on-one -on -one interactions. With them, we held community meetings for teachers, students, and police officers to, dis to discuss the relationship between teens and cops. We continue to attend and, inv and invite our peers to be meetings as well as various led police events such as Peer Jury and Explore. In the beginning, over 50% of the students that we surveyed ranked their trust for police officers lower than a five on a one to 10 scale. Moreover, those same students had an, had an average of 10 incidents with police officers. We found this data outrageous and we were determined to change it. So after conducting the lessons we created for the workshops, we handed out more surveys and found out that students had an 81% increase of trust for police officers, 85% felt like they knew their rights better, and 82% felt like they were more comfortable around around law enforcement in general. 100% of those who participated stated that they would participate again. We had a total of 71 students and 31 police officers. We also managed to hand out over 15 applications for the Explorers Program, or Explorers Club, which is a police-led program. Also, as a team, we participated in peer jury meetings in which we were given the task of coming, coming up with an age-appropriate sanction for students who committed crimes, for teens that committed crimes. After our workshops, we had received an invitation from Robin Robinson herself to attend the Police Achievement Awards. At this event, we were able to help honor and celebrate police officers who have demonstrated heroic service. We also had one of our team members to speak on the School of Prison Pipeline at the Eileen Spring Action Legislative Assembly. There, he was able to present his own testimony and contribute to a discussion focused on tackling this issue. Through our reach at Phillips, we were able to encourage other students to attend elite and beat meetings and more students at our school to help with our projects. We also collaborated with the other Aspen Challenge team members that chose to tackle this issue. We all met at the Chicago, the police department headquarters to network with police officers and brainstorm ideas on how our project can help and grow and can help grow and support one another. All in all, our work thus far has been successful. We've been able to create a versatile curriculum that can be used all throughout Chicago, not just in the Bronzeville community. We've also been able to make long lasting relationships with local community organizations and law enforcement. If you wish to support us in any way, please do contact us at our Facebook at Team Tactics.
My name is My name is Miles. I'm Trayvon. I'm Shavanti. I'm Joshua. I'm Sean. I'm, Bruce, I'm Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kevin. And we, we are Tantix. Okay, I need to share two more facts about tactics, um, something they did not share with you because it happened as they were leaving the city of Chicago to come to Aspen. Uh, well, first of all, they didn't know the police in their precinct personally before the Aspen challenge happened. So by them showing up and forming a relationship with their local cops, um, they became friends. I mean, there were group text messages going around and this is something I learned um, when I went to Chicago to visit them. And then when they came to Aspen, they got a police escort from the south side of Chicago to O'Hare Airport <laughs> by the cops. <laughs> All the way. It was, it's pretty amazing and that's pretty special. And the bond that, that was formed not only with this group of students and the cops in their precinct. Um, the, very, the, very, um, the very next night we were there and visiting Chicago, we had a town hall meeting because of the incredible work led by this team with um, about 50 high school students in the city of Chicago and about 30 cops. So they're literally moving the needle and this is really exciting, really exciting work. So good job, you guys. And last but certainly, certainly, certainly not least, Sankofa. When I say waste not, you say what not, waste not. Why not? Waste not. Why not? Waste not. Why not? Waste not. Why not? 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 Good afternoon. My name is Tariq Mons Jr. and we are Sankofa Feeds. We are set to Kamala Mons Challenge, which is recovering food in a sustainable and scalable way. I'm Taylor. I'm James. I'm Brianna. I'm Destiny. I'm Mariah. I'm Joshua. And I'm Omar. And, and we, we are Sankofa, Sankofa Feeds. Feeds. Sankofa Freedom Academy Charter School is located in the Kensington community of Philadelphia. We are a K-12 college preparatory freedom school. Kensington is known for homicide, poverty, depression, searching for a meal, in the end, I was a blessing. It was a time of my life where I used to be hungry. I was scraping up change, man, that stuff wasn't funny. All the time I cried like rain, the days was never sunny. Had more pain than girls with contractions in their tummies. I was fighting so hard just to get a meal, but I had a good heart, but it looks to kill. We had the Poor Prince St. Francis to get second chances while big businesses waste food and walk over no glances. Wishing the mill amount to a penny. I'm trying to make change instead of trying to make change. You see the world we live in, it need a lot of change. So we're here now, giving directors like a director to make new scenes. Let's, Let's make, make a, a scene. scene. According to the 2010 census, Kensington and East Kensington has significant amount of African American and Hispanics. 49% were African American and Hispanics together. 41.2% are white. The neighborhood average income is less than the nation's average. 45% of the population earning is less than the poverty line. According to GPCAH, the Greater Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger, 30% of children in Philadelphia are hungry. 14% are white. 18% are black. And 25% are Latino. 40% of the state food stamps recipients are children. Our vision was to recover food in a sustainable way while feeding the homeless within a four mile radius of our school. Between the months of March through June, we were able to decrease the hunger rate in the Kensington community by 20%. As a team, we developed a nonprofit organization and ways to recover food. We used the style of pop-up diners to distribute our recovered food. As a team, we also created a public school. Uh, we also created a public school network of food recovery chapters. A food recovery chapter is a way for schools and organizations to work underneath the umbrella of Sankofa Feeds and carry the mission and vision of Sankofa Feeds to distribute um, recovered food in a scalable way. Our project is sustainable because we have a yearly convocation for all the Sankofa feed chapters. During this event, representatives share annual data regarding their feedings and set goals for the coming year. Another way our project is sustainable, will prove its sustainability, is through, our, is, through, is through our request to make participation a mandatory credit. 
We will accomplish this by submitting a petition for credit to East School's Board of Directors. The most memorable moment we had during our project was when we actually went out to the Kensington community to do feedings. Although it was not uncommon for us to do feed, although it was not uncommon for us to have com conversations during our pro during our feedings, there was one particular moment that stood out to us. There was a lady who was about 56 years old. She was homeless and she was Caucasian. She was sitting on the corner of Kensington Avenue and she shared her story with tears of joy. The exact word she stated was, God gave me another chance. I suffered from, I suffered from a brain and aneurysm, and I couldn't be more thankful for people like you. And now we will show a short film of moments of our project. During the challenge, these were our outcomes. First, we finalized all paperwork in order to become a nonprofit organization. Second, we took a total of two days a week to collect food from local businesses and mini marts. Third, oh, the Sankofa team reached out to numerous schools that were not in the Aspen community to create different chapters to help pay it forward. Start wide. Since the Aspen Challenge say COVID Peace has created a goal board that we wanted to complete. It took a tremendous amount of work to fulfill our goals. We did a huge amount of outreach into different places, people, and venues. One of our goals is on our board is to have legislation to change FDA laws, which is the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. This is the State Representative Jason Dawkins. Saying COVID Peace contacted Representative Dawkins to able to change, to change laws and expand our project. We had change our and change our project. Also, we had contact. Also, we had contact Mayor Jim Kenny, who, as we wrote to him, he wrote back to us saying, "Dear Tyreek, thank you for thank you for reaching out to me. I appreciate hearing from you about this matter. I am also glad to hear of the work you are already doing to end hunger through your organization. I will encourage you to refer this to blog posts for more information about how to work with us to reduce hunger." The very next day after we presented at the ballroom at the Bend, we volunteered at the Philadelphia Food Share Program. While volunteering, we got the chance to, to talk to the owner of the corporation and instantly gain a partnership. The Big Feed. Every year since St. Copa opened in 2009, we have an annual Say by the Hecker Festival, where the children from K-8 through come together and help empower the community through words. So on this day, what we did was we came together and gave out, and we fed over 100 individuals. But ever since we started our St. Copa Feeds organization, we fed over 500 individuals. The day after our big feed, we went out to the community to survey the people. 94% believed the pop-up diners was a good idea for the community. 86% are willing to participate and join our St. Copa Feeds program. 96% believe that the St. Copa Feeds program helped the Kensington community hunger rate depreciate. St. Copa will remain sustainable even after we leave. We say this because each year, 10th graders are now mandated to carry the mission and vision of St. Copa Feeds program. The 10th grade mandatory requirements are Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Thursdays community, community feedings, feedings public, public relations, fundraisers, volunteering, volunteering and food pantry. Food. Here is a video of our 10th graders that, that volunteer helping after, expressing their feelings after a pop-up diner. You, at, um, for passing out the feed, how do y'all, how do y'all feel? Can I go first? Yeah. I just feel as though I, I, I made a couple people smile and I, uh, I just set the trend, you know, just say cool for feeds and I just want to make people happy, you know? You know, I feel as though, like, I, I did something for my school community. 
talking about we, we got to come here every day for school. We got to learn in this environment. So to see the people when we give out the food, to see them smile and they talk on us, it just makes me feel good inside. I just feel grateful for what we had, man. If we could get back, why not get back? That's all I'm saying, man. All I'm saying, man, I just feel grateful for my kids. For the kids in middle school, just like we doing. I was once poor. I was once hungry. I used to starve. I couldn't sleep. No food to eat. I needed heat. A meal was all I needed. I'm trying to make change instead of trying to make change. Let's make a change. Okay, wow, eight weeks, eight weeks, I'm not kidding, eight weeks. Um, so as we prepare, we're gonna have a little time for Q&A with a representative from each team on stage. Um, and I'd like to mention a few more people in the audience that need recognition. Um, first of all, this is an absolute, absolutely remarkable group of young people. I mean, can we all agree, like this entire group, no matter what, it's just absolutely amazing. Um, but the teachers, so every team of high school students as teachers. The teachers are a crucial part to the Aspen Challenge team and in all of our years of participating in the Aspen Challenge program and, and being a part of this kind of work, without question, the teams that come to Aspen have remarkable teachers that are the wind beneath their wings. So can all of the teachers from Philly and Chicago please, please, please stand up. You're heroes, and we all owe you a debt of gratitude. Thank you for everything you do, not only for the challenge, but for walking the walk you do in our public schools every day. You're amazing. Uh, without further ado, we would like to invite one team member from each school up on stage. Uh, Milo, Mark, Joshua, Tariq, come on up. And we have a distinguished moderator of this panel. Uh, this gentleman by the name of Nick Davis, some of you in the room have heard of him before, was a participant in the Aspen Challenge in Los Angeles in 2013. He and his school won the Aspen Challenge with flying colors. They literally built an aquaponic greenhouse on their high school campus, which is still in existence today and is still part of their entire school culture. As a matter of fact, Nick is going back to LA to serve as a consultant to the school to continue developing the work of the, of the greenhouse on the campus. So um, Nick, please come on stage. It's an honor to have you back. And Nick's gonna talk a little bit about um, his work and ask a few questions to the students and then he'll toss it to you all for questions. Can you hear me? All right, how's everyone doing? Good. Um, give it up one more time for these schools and the awesome challenges, yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to congratulate you all again. This work that you're doing is incredible. Um, you're saving lives, feeding people. Um, it's no small feat, honestly, and you really earned your way here. Um, so I was asked to talk a little bit about how I got here, and then I'm going to ask you all a couple questions, and we'll open it up to the crowd. Um, so for us, um, as Katie said earlier, we, our team um, built an aquaponic greenhouse, and um, I want to talk a little less about what we actually did and more about um, what the challenge did to us. Um, when you come from a school, uh, I went to Westchester High School in um, Los Angeles. I'm from Inglewood. Um, every day my freshman year of school, um, we had to walk through metal detectors to get into school. And thinking about that as, um, in terms of from the first day, the, the expectation that the administration and the teachers and the police have of you is to be somebody who is delinquent or who is going to be a threat to the, to the community and your surroundings. Um, and I remember um, walking into the, the Aspen Challenge Room for the first time and um, knowing there was gonna be important people, not having my bag randomly checked for knives or guns. Um, I remember 
walking in to smiles and hugs and people saying, you're the future, we want you here. Um, we don't think that you're gonna mess anything up. We're not scared of you being in mobs and gangs and whatnot. Um, you're here to, to make change. And I think that fundamentally, um, inside of me and inside of my peers and other people who are given this opportunity, um, changes the way that we think about ourselves and the way that we can make an impact on the world. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll open it up to questions. Um, I'm really interested in hearing from you all. Um, what, where do you all see these projects going? In the, next, uh, in the next five years, how do you see your projects evolving and your individual involvements in these? Uh, I think our project's gonna evolve. So, as we did this project, it's now mandated to the 10th graders. So, the grades, the who, people that keep coming up, so it's going to keep going, because in Kensington, it's very uh, poor, homelessness, pe homeless people, people who are hungry. So I feel like, as we set an example right now, we can make a change starting right now for the uh, younger people. Um, um, our goal is not only to have just Meraki in like our school community, but to also expand it out to the whole US. Um, there, like, there's a lot of food that's going to waste. We have to help America, help the world, help the earth, and just make it a better place by limiting food waste. Um, for my project, we, uh, we have a lot of attention from CAPS and a lot of other community organizations. And seeing how we've partnered with them and they actually want to help us, we've uh, had the opportunity to become um, a community organization um, as soon as possible, you know, after this challenge. And we're going to go back, uh, TAPS, Teen Alternative Policing Strategy, and we're going to branch out as much as we can. Um, well, Fit Philly is sustainable, and we continue to have our weekly outreaches and all the events that we have at school. But uh, a problem that we'd like to, or we are currently going to tackle, is the fact that a lot of schools are in Center City and they do not have gyms where you could implement Fit Philly to teach um, re uh, regular exercise, nutrition. So that could almost like replace a gym class because they don't have a gym class. And so that's what I hope for Fit, P Fit Philly to become. Um, in this, uh, in this crowd of people you're speaking to, we've got senators, doctors, lawyers, all types of people. Um, why don't you take 30 seconds to kind of like plug yourselves in? Um, what is it, what is it that, what are some of your career goals, some of your college goals? Um, where are you looking now? Uh, what, what do you want to kind of get from, from this crowd? If anybody could stand up and ask you a question, who would, who would you want to talk to? Um, I would like to talk to um, anyone who has contacts with anything that has anything to do with any community outreach program at all. I want to branch out in whatever ways, and that's not even just addressing this uh, police brutality issue in Chicago. I want to branch out and help as many people as possible. Wow. I've had to choose somebody, I would choose somebody who works with Kids and homelessness, like ever since a kid, I always wanted to make change. Uh, I, wa I wanted to make a foundation for disability kids. Shout out to my cousin, he got autism. Also, I wanted to help homelessness because I don't like to see people on the streets who are starving, uh, struggling, so yeah. Um, for me, I would love to work with someone who works with veterans because me, um, my mother worked in the VA, she had a brain tumor. And um, that really, like, during that time, it was a hard time, and she got through it, thank God. Um, but her work with the veterans inspired me to work with veterans today, and I'm just thankful about that. If I was able to speak with anyone, I would love to speak with someone who runs nonprofits and helps uh, the management side of things. Um, it's very important that people become healthy, healthy equals happiness. When people are healthy, they are happy. And when people eat junk food or you know, don't even get the proper nutrition, that's where you see a lot of problems. So if you do something as simple as give a kid or an adult a healthy meal, their entire lives could be changed just from that one thing. So. Um, when, when our team was going about addressing our challenge, um, we had a very linear kind of step-by-step, -step, this is how we want to do things. Um, once we decided we wanted to have an aquaponic greenhouse, we were like, okay, this is what we need to do to build it. Um, what something we needed was a lot of student volunteers. Um, 
And I remember we hosted a pep rally, uh, gave out smoothies, all kinds of whatever, like told people how to cook with kale, all the things that are going to be grown in our greenhouse. And um, we said, people, you want to show up? Like, are you excited about this? I said, yeah. And we're like, all right, come out this Thursday, 10 AM. Let's get to work. We show up, and nobody was there. Um, me and my friend were talking uh, a little while afterwards, and we overheard some kids talking about um, how they weren't going to be able to graduate because of detention hours. Um, and we went and talked to our principal, and he made it so that kids could get double detention hours taken off the more time they spent at the greenhouse. Um, we showed up that Saturday, and 115 kids showed up. <laughs> um, and so that was kind of an example of a problem um, that we, coming in, didn't initially predict um, and didn't know how to solve until we kind of made ourselves more aware of our surroundings and our community. Um, what are a couple road bumps that you all experienced along the way, and how did you overcome those? And um, what did you learn from them? OK, so like you said, we uh, had issues getting people involved. And um, we already knew that that was going to be an issue because a lot of people in our school automatically hate police just because of the, it's the media and all the police brutality and everything that's out there. So what we did, we actually had one-on-one -on -one conversations in the classes that we had with these people before we gave out the surveys or really let them know about you know, what was going on to kind of, you know, I wouldn't say butter them up, but yeah, that's what we did. So, <laughs> and that was one of the hardest things to overcome. But other than that, it, it kind of fell smoothly after that. You know, a couple of um, different plans on how we were going to do it and team members leaving, but we made it through it. Okay, um, in Meraki, since we, um, like, every Tuesday and Thursday, we went down to our cafeteria and collected food. Um, we got maybe 50 to 60 milks and a whole bunch of fruit. So storage was like nothing. We had two fridges. They were filled automatically. We didn't have any space at all. So um, that was our biggest challenge. And our teachers, we're thankful to you guys for letting us use your space. <laughs> all right, it's like same for uh, what Milo said. So every Tuesday and Thursday, we, we, we took a... Uh, Time out our lunch and fed homeless, the homeless and the hungry. So we fed over 100 people a week. So I believe the biggest challenges was just trying to keep getting food. But honestly, I don't think we had no challenge because we went out at lunchtime and people was there. So we gave food out. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then one last question, just really quick. Um, all of you uh, are, are you all, are any of you seniors or are you all younger? You're going into your senior year, right? So you haven't applied for colleges and whatnot yet. Um, what are you all thinking about majoring? And um, yeah, what are you passionate about? Oh, all right, that's a lot of pressure. Hold up. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, my father is a mechanic, and my mother has lupus, and they say it's incurable. Um, I was thinking about going into either something with, you know, being a doctor or being a mechanic, but. After this, this project, I'm, I'm honestly thinking about business management, and I feel like if I can make an impact in that, then different doors are open up, and I might be able to, hey, cure lupus and work on cars. Who knows? Um, me, me um, I'm thinking about business or engineering right now. Business, because I get to communicate with people, see how they're feeling. And like after this whole experience, that's a great opportunity to go talk to people. And I'm um, engineering, because it just runs in the family. So, yeah. I believe for me, I'll ch for a major, I will choose theater and minor business, because I want to set up a foundation for the homelessness and hungry. So that's my mission. Um, I would like to go to school for humanitarianism and social science because I believe that change starts from within. So if I could take that small step and learn how to make change, then everything will just fall in place. All right. So now we have time for a question from the crowd. If anybody wants Don't be shy. to ask these scholars a question, um, how about right back there? Hi, thanks. I'm Brian. Question for Team Tactics. Um, I'm moving to Chicago next year. What do you What do you think are some of the challenges that you foresee 
uh, team tactics having if they want to, if you want to scale up to other Chicago neighborhoods, other Chicago high schools, what are some of the difficulties and challenges that you think that other high schools may, may face that maybe you didn't face? What, what are some of those challenges you think they may have? Honestly, in my community, um, there's a lot of gangs and my school is a separate gang from, you know, they, they claim that, but I don't, so I didn't have that much of a problem, but I feel like having different people branch out and have, like, you know, getting over that, that one speed bump, the gang, is, the gang, whatever you want to call it, and then the fact that they don't trust police, I feel like since we don't have the opportunity to talk to them in class and things of the sort, I feel like it's going to be a, a little difficult to um, actually convince them that this is the right thing to do and that's, this is what's needed, but we got this. Awesome. <laughs> With that, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, however, all of us and all the teams are going to go out to the Marble Garden tent. So if you have more questions or you'd like to engage with these remarkable young people, I invite you out there. Um, for those of you that, that aren't really involved with the program yet, you're probably saying, how can we get the Aspen Challenge in our city? Um, and if you have someone named Stephanie Nadoff who lives there, then I think there's a good chance. But in all seriousness, Stephanie Nadoff has been a champion in Philadelphia, and we wouldn't be in Philadelphia without Stephanie Nadoff and all of her hard work and belief in the program. Stephanie, please stand. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm also excited to announce that, um, as I'm sure you've picked up, the Aspen Challenge goes to a new city each year. We exist in uh, Los Angeles, Denver, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and Chicago, and next year we're looking forward to launching in Dallas, Texas. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and one of the crucial partnerships that we make in, in our very first steps in going to any city is partnering with the public school district. So Zach Epps, please stand. Yeah. Last thing, I promise. Zach Epps works for the public school district in Philadelphia, and we would not be here today without Zach, without everybody at Chicago Public Schools and every other public school district that welcomes us with open arms and allows us to reach out and work with their remarkable young people. So um, this, is, this just scratches the surface. This is just a small sample of what's out there. So please, please, please join us in this work and welcoming all youth to the table when you're talking about anything that matters. They deserve a seat. Thank you.